This episode of Eye on Horror was recorded just before the devastating Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade was handed down. This week's guest, Amalia, has created a collection of 13 Fight Like a Final Girl shirts with proceeds going to abortion and women's health charities all over the country. If this cause means as much to you as it does to us, head on over to Poltergeist and Paramours, check out the line, and pick up a shirt. Or 13. Okay, enough with the liberal grifting. On with the episode. Hit it! Eye on Horror, the official podcast of iHorror.com. This is episode 89, otherwise known as season five, episode 11. I am your host, James J. Edwards, and with me, as always, is your other host, Jacob Davison. How are you doing, Jacob? Doing good. A little tired. I was out all night at the uh, Child's Play Marathon at the New Beverly. They don't call it a Chucky Thon? Or, well, Chucky Thon, Child's Play <laughs> Marathon. You know, it's weird with the titles, kind of like. Uh, they went from Friday the 13th to like Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X. Also with us, as always, is your other other host, John Korea. How you doing, Korea? Uh, doing all right. You know, just tired. Just, uh, just up late like an idiot. <laughs> and we're recording later today than we usually do. We're all I, just beat. <laughs> I, I know. I We we where you said we we're going to record a little later so we get some sleepy old <laughs> bright eyed, bushy tailed. And then we were degents and we're up late. Yeah. Party <laughs> animals. We can't help it. We can stay up late because we're recording late. <laughs> <laughs> also, we've got with us um, a special guest, more than a guest, a friend of the podcast at this point. Welcome back, Amalia. Hi, Emma. Hey guys, nice to be back. And d- don't answer yet because we also have another special guest, Emma's partner, Brandon Scullion, another filmmaker and just all around everything person. How are you doing, Brandon? I'm doing great. A little bit tired like everybody else. (laughs) Well, we can be tired together. This is the tired (laughs) podcast now. Yeah, It's Sunday morning. You're supposed to be tired. And Father's Day. (laughs) And Juneteenth. What are we doing recording today? Uh, (laughs) We're we're bringing Emma and Brandon in at the beginning here because we've got a lot we want to talk to them about. And also... There's not really that much going on that we have seen. Um, <laughs> I think Jacob uh, probably did the most with his Chucky thon. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll also I saw Paddington and Paddington Two. Nice. Oh, that's <laughs> that's such a great double feature. It was. I cried both times. So wholesome. <laughs> they greenlit Paddington Three. Yes, they did. Yeah. Absolutely. So very excited for that. They can make as many Paddington movies as they want. Those movies are awesome. Yeah, no, I say keep it going. I love that bear now. <laughs> How could you not? I mean, he's just he's so adorable. He's it's just so a proper. little guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's oh. just trying to get a roof over his head. You guys have seen the colorization of of uh, the lighthouse where um, Robert oh, Pattinson yeah. is dressed like Pattinson. <laughs> yeah, he's got the hair. He's got oh, the hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, this is what it looked like in color. And and he's at his clothes are Paddington <laughs> color. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. Similar styles. <laughs> and then there's that uh, Twitter account where they keep putting Paddington in different movie scenes. Yeah, yeah the last one was RRR. It's Paddington and the uh, two leads just hanging out. <laughs> Uh, let's start off with the question I like to ask all guests and Emma's already taken this. So she gets a pass, but Brandon, what attracted you to horror? What was your gateway into horror? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it wasn't just one gateway. There were many gateways when I was a kid. I mean, the first thing that popped into my head right now was the movie from dusk till dawn. I saw that when I was in fourth grade, I watched it by myself. My mom let me watch it by myself. She rented it for me from blockbuster, but um, I mean, it was all kinds of things. It was, you know, the real Ghostbusters animated show when I was a, a real young kid. It was reading Goosebumps, like I think is the case for a lot of young people. Um, but there, there are many gateways, essentially. From Dust Till Dawn, she must have only watched like the first half of it <laughs> before they got <laughs> no, to the I, Titty I, Twister. No, I watched both halves. I remember I was in third grade. I, I had a, a friend who just, he saw it. This third grader saw it and he told me about it. And I was, I was obsessed with this idea of this movie about these vampires in a bar and i i was obsessed with the movie before i even saw it and it was uh when i saw it i was like that was that was one movie that actually lived up to all of my dreams and ideas of the movie from dust till dawn 
Yeah, it. that's one of those movies, if you know nothing about it going in, right about halfway through, it just takes a left turn. You're like, oh, wait. What is really? this the same movie? <laughs> did I did I walk out and you know come back in? <laughs> Masterpiece. From Dust to Dawn is always like my sick day movie. Like when I'm not feeling good or I'm in like a bad mood or something, it's always like a comfort movie. But what about the sequels? Any, anyone got love for two or three? Uh, I mean, Hangman's Daughters has its moments. Uh, don't remember too much about two. Uh, what was it? Texas Blood Money. Yeah, yeah, that one had Robert Patrick in it, right? He was the yeah, star. and Bruce Campbell. Yes, for one scene, one like little candy. <laughs> yeah. I love Scott Spiegel. I think he's a wonderful human, and that's all I have to say about those movies. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having a lot of fun with three because it it, it yeah. played out very similarly. Only it was a western for like yeah, the it first was a half. period film for uh, yeah. it was like the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. If you guys haven't checked it out, there's also a really amazing documentary about the the original film, the production of it called Full Tilt Boogie. Um, yeah. It's a feature length oh, yeah. documentary, super awesome, all kinds of cool BTS on it. And uh, so, Brandon, uh, what? Uh, how did you start uh, making your own horror? Like, did you did you make short films, or did did you uh, what what did you do? Yeah, you know, um, I think it, which is the case for a lot of people. I, I my mom had a camcorder when I was a kid, and I. I fell in love with hits in third grade. Again, I, I remember our, our teacher made a class movie with all the students and it took place in, in space. It was like Apollo 11 and a half or something. <laughs> and we, we shot it all as a class. I have the VHS tape somewhere, but I remember it was then I sort of fell in love with like storytelling and, and filming. And I remember um, from a very early age, you know, setting up my action figures and, and making little plays and, and videos with my action figures. And then, that basically evolved into, you know, high school actually making or attempting to make films. They're really terrible, but, um, you know, uh, making lots of films in high school and of course going to film school and it just sort of um, spiraled and grew from there. And, and now I'm the best filmmaker ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's actually a really cool teacher that um, to do that project. That's like, I mean, that's like an actual practical project. That's not just teaching you math that you're never going to know again. I mean, you're, you're open in minds. That's a cool teacher. We had, when I was in elementary school, we had a program called video and that's what it's called video. And basically there was like a little TV station in the school and you could go there and you would always do a newscast and there, and you would draw what you wanted to be like talent camera. And um, I always was the technical director, the guy who did all the switching and cutting and stuff. So when I finally did get to, to um, film school and sat down at one of those consoles, I was like, I know how to do this. You already you know? do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like so weird because that's, I mean, that, it doesn't really change. The technology changes, but you're like, I know how to do this. You know, it's, it's funny what sticks with you from elementary school. Cause like you said, you know, this, it was probably a throwaway project for a lot of kids, but you're like, Oh, this is it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, it was, it was, yeah. I remember like, I remember when we had this like little premiere in the classroom and every, you know, seeing everything come together, it just blew my mind. I, and the, I, you know, the teacher, he, he was an old school filmmaker. He did, you know, he would edit through two VCRs and, um, I, I was just blown away by what he could do. We built all these sets. We built like little spaceships in the classroom that the students sat in. And it, it was really amazing for, you know, what a bunch of third graders could pull off. Was the teacher um, a filmmaker himself? You know, I, I really don't know. I know that he, that wasn't his first, you know, the, that wasn't the first class project they had done. So I, I don't know if it was some sort of like passion he had when he was younger and he, you know, he had to settle for being a teacher and, you know, live vicariously through his students or whatever. But um. I, you know, it was definitely a, a, there was a great love of cinema in third grade. That's for sure. It sounds like one of those school of rock deals where like, you know, he yeah. wants to make movies. So he uses his <laughs> students. So he gets, I think that was movies. exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, you get your crews where you can find them. <laughs> right. he, his name was Mike Smith, uh, Doris French elementary in Las Vegas, Nevada. So I don't know where he is. No idea. Mike Smith. Good luck finding that guy. I think he's playing goalie for the Edmonton Oilers now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because there's probably only one Mike Smith, right? Right, exactly. That's not <laughs> a super generic name at all. And now uh, you have, uh, I'm looking over you guys' IMDb. So in third grade, you made this little short with your class, and now you have 45 directed titles across yeah. from like features and shorts. And uh, you got a new one coming out called New Hands. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that movie? 
Sure. Uh, New Hands is a, it's a feature film that's coming out later this year through Indican uh, releasing. Uh, it's the story of a guy who gets in an accident at work, basically, where his hands get damaged in, a, in some sort of freak accident. But in his life, his hands are everything. It's, it's everything to him. So when he loses his hands, uh, you know, he's sort of having to go through a great life change. And, you know, that just happens to include a little bit of murder. Why not? Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, New Hands, it started as a, a short film, actually, um, that I shot with Liesl Hansen uh, back in 2017, I think. Uh, and it sort of grew from there. And yes, it's, uh, it's been a long journey, but super excited for people to see it. It's uh, my fun little horror film. And then I'm excited to start on a new one after that. Oh, and you said it was going to get a uh, physical media release. Right. Uh, I don't have too much, too many details on that right now. It's all still being worked on and we're still uh, sort of in the middle of delivering the film. Uh, but yeah, it's going to have a physical release and a, a streaming release sometime later this year uh, or early next year. Cool, cool. And especially because, you know, it just it feels like it's harder these days for uh, movies to get physical releases, especially yeah, with streaming, too. Well, that was one of the big things for me. I, I you know, I, I, I have a love and hate relationship between physical media. I, I love having everything cataloged, but I hate things that take up space. So um, I think when it comes to my own <laughs> stuff, I always, you know, of course, I want a DVD or a Blu-ray release. It, it, it's such a magical feeling. And um, I'll never forget my going to Dark Dell's in Burbank to buy my first movie. He stalked it. I don't know Dell. I don't know him at all, really. I'm um, just through Anna. But I, my, my first movie had come out on DVD and I was calling around LA just like to see if anybody had stalked it. And I called Dark Dell and he was like, yeah, we got it. Come on down. <laughs> and so I... I got my old roommate, Corey, and my our, my camcorder, and I made him film me buying my own movie at Dark Dells. <laughs> uh, but that's there's there was nothing like that. It was a really cool feeling. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a blessing and, a, and an honor to uh, get another one. Nice. Also, that was a great uh, Dark Dell impression. Thank you. <laughs> was it accurate? <laughs> my issue with physical media is you have to get up off the couch to change it or put it in. No. I. I mean, if I own a Blu-ray, but it's still streaming somewhere, I just pick up the remote and find it. Same <laughs> us too. Yeah, we're always like, we don't want to go get the Blu-ray. Let's, let's just find it on HBO or something. <laughs> How did you go about um, fleshing out a short film to a feature? I mean, what, what's involved? I mean, obviously, you don't want to just pad the running time. Um, what was that experience like? Uh, well, it was, it was easy. I remember at the time, you know, it was a, a story that had been with me for a very long time. Um, I had made the short film and I was sort of in the lurch of where I wanted to go with my next thing. And I was like, well, you've got this kind of cool idea with the new hands. So I remember sitting down over a weekend and and putting on a bunch of old silent horror films. And and that's, I, I sat down and I was watching those and I, I plotted out the whole thing over uh, one or two weekends. And yeah, it was sort of like finding little uh, nuggets of ideas from the short film and, and seeing what was, what could be expanded upon, what was worth expanding on, what was interesting, um, which, you know, it, it's tricky. You know, you like you said, you don't want to just pat out the time. You want to keep the audience interested. So um, hopefully I was able to do that. But it was really, you know, it was a quick, uh, for me, it was a quick process, quicker than it normally goes. I, I spent about two weekends, uh, you know, I, I work during the week, so I, I usually save all the cool, fun work for the weekend. So I wrote it over two weekends and then, uh, I'm sorry, I beat it out over two weekends, the story. And uh, then over the next couple of weekends, I, I ended up writing um, the whole script. And it, it really didn't evolve once I made that whole version. Um, the script didn't really change that much. I, I think I ironed out all the kinks in the sort of planning stages for it, which which really helped because it was a, a project that I wanted to get into quickly. I didn't want to rush into it, but it, I needed I needed something. And, and that was what was sort of driving me at the time. What's the runtime on the feature? Uh, I think the final runtime is around 84 or 85 minutes. How long was the, uh, was the short that you fleshed out? Oh, gosh. Uh, shorter than 10 minutes. Much shorter than 10 minutes. I think it was around 7 or 8 minutes. Maybe less than that. I was just wondering how, you know, what, how long. It, I mean, 84 minutes, 85 minutes. That is the sweet spot for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's nothing I love more than seeing a sub 90 minute movie. I'm like, yes, <laughs> it's a rarity these days. And uh, Brandon, I did also want to ask in regards to the story. Um, 
uh, because uh, there have been a lot of uh, horror movies revolving around uh, particularly hands and limbs over the years. And uh, why do you think that is? And what was your own approach to the subject? Wow. Well, I don't, you know, it, it hands, I think it, I kind of go into it in, in the film. I, you guys haven't seen it, obviously, but <laughs> the hand, our hands are what make us different from pretty much every animal on the planet. We we're the only ones who have opposable thumbs. Uh, they, they make us basically the apex predator and, and we can create art because of our hands. And we, we create everything because of our hands. So that was sort of the, the approach that I, I took to a sort of reverence and, and respect for hands. If, if you can imagine, um, and, and trying to find the horror of, you know, the horror in having, you know, these things that are, you know, quote unquote, a perfect creation for, for man, having this thing be spoiled and, and uh, having to replace them or, you know, this thing that you thought was once pure and perfect and now it's decaying. Uh, that sort of appealed to me. That was sort of the horror aspect of it for me, the, the sort of awfulness of having something you love destroyed. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, it, who knows? It could be the biggest hand mo- movie since Manos, The Hands of Fate. <laughs> <laughs> You're forgetting about Idle Hands. Or, or The Hand. hand. <laughs> Korea won't let you forget about Idle Hands. Oh, you no. Can't. <laughs> can't forget about Idle Hands. Are you not a fan? No, I love Idle Hands. He's it's, a huge fan. <laughs> it's, it's one of those. I, I don't smoke weed, but I love stoner comedies. And Idle Hands <laughs> is like one of my all time favorites. So That's, yeah. Hell yeah. Love that movie. <laughs> How could you not? Now, um, you guys, uh, Alma, you directed and Brandon, you edited on the uh, Fangoria Chainsaw Awards, which, you know, was a few weeks ago. But we wanted <laughs> to talk about that again because you guys did a fucking awesome job with oh, that. Oh, thank you. Uh, not only was it great seeing, you know, great f- pieces of work get recognized, but you guys really uh, went at the heart of, you know, uh, Monster Kids and the origins yeah. of everyone's uh, love for horror. Um, tell us a little bit about that. What was uh, what was the process of, A, getting this all together because, you know, still pandemic and getting everyone in and stuff what were some of the big challenges uh with getting so many people on um it was it was crazy it was so fast uh when vangoria asked me if i would direct it they uh they initially really wanted to do like a live event show but then with covid and uh all of the things surrounding that it just logistically wasn't possible but uh we built a set on a soundstage here in Burbank at Wolfpack Studios. And I sort of like coordinated all of the uh, the presenters for all one day. We just shot them back to back. And as you and Jacob were actually there for one day of shooting and, uh, you know, we shot the, the audience separately. So we try to keep people, you know, as safe and separate as possible. COVID tests everywhere. Um it was it was a lot for a short amount of time. It really cannot be understated the amount of work that Amalia did. She <laughs> just as somebody who was like observing I, the role I had to play in the Fangoria Awards was like five percent compared to Amma's like ninety five percent. I I was only serving a vision here. Watching Amma plan and coordinate everything, it, it, it made my head spin, and it was. It was so much to take on. And uh, I, I, as always, I'm in awe of Emma, you know, watching what she can do and how she can make things happen. It's, it's incredible. And I, I can't even just begin to tell you how, how much of that show was her and how much of it, how much heart, you know, she put into it. I'm, I'm not trying to talk for you, Emma, but um, <laughs> just, just as a person who was, you know, the person who was serving the, her vision, it was, it was incredible to watch. She had such a, a strong vision and, and such a strong idea of what she wanted. Um, it was to, to edit the show. It was easy on my part. It was, it was, it was like a dream because she assembled such a great show. What was it like trying to schedule all the presenters for, you said you did that on a different day. What, was that a challenge because everybody's so busy or. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was, I mean, the amount of time. So like, the amount of time we had in general was so short because we had to wait for the winners to be announced uh, well, like, or like tallied up the, the voting to close. So I had to make sure 
that I was hopefully not scheduling anyone who was going to win an award <laughs> as a presenter. Uh, and there's a lot of people that I'd asked that couldn't do it. And like, you know, it was, it was a lot of like, you know, begging and asking for favors. <laughs> like, can you just come for like 10 minutes? We'll get you in and out. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the presenters, they definitely did not just do 10 minutes because uh, some of the makeup was incredible. The Boulets and Darcy were just like yeah. on point. Darcy's eye makeup it was so cool. Get out of here. That was incredible. Uh, <laughs> what about um, all the uh, web interviews? Did you schedule all those in one day as well? Or uh, the all the like the winners? The acceptance speeches. Acceptance speeches and uh, the uh, inter- uh, yeah. Zoom interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- so I, as I said, we had such a short amount of time with the winners. We had like a day's notice of like who was winning to actually filming the show. And so, you know, me and Phil Noble got on the, the horn and were anyone local. We're just like, hey, can you come in and, you know, accept your award? A few people could. Most people couldn't. So then it was just making sure like we could logistically get the trophies there in time and then, you know, get people to film something. And nobody knew how to put them together, right? <laughs> like, because the 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 chainsaws come in pieces. And <laughs> oh, just to just to piggyback off that, there was a really funny one where Edgar Wright made a really funny acceptance speech. He won for last night in Soho. He put together a really funny acceptance speech, but he didn't assemble the trophy right. <laughs> so Fangoria and Emma, you they they went at him. They're like, "Hey, uh, can you guys make another uh, acceptance video and put it together right?" And Edgar Wright, like, so cool. He actually made another acceptance video. And then, I don't know, somebody had decided it was funnier, you know, assembled incorrectly. So we got Edgar Wright, fucking cool guy Edgar Wright, to make us another video. And we still just <laughs> ended up going with the first one. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, um, like, for the uh, writing of the show, you uh, you done shorts and movies but uh what, what was it like to write uh, an award show um michael michael Verratti wrote the show oh um but i think i guess my involvement on that was i knew i didn't want to just give famous people shiny things and i really wanted like a thematic element and i was like i really wanted it to be about like everyone's horror origins like the things that drew us all to horror as kids like and then from that what jobs we all worked as you know teenagers and now even that took us from like I love watching movies that my parents don't know I'm watching to I worked at a video store or a movie theater just so I could get free movies (laughs) and then to like you know people working in the industry and making their own movies now and I really wanted it to be a celebration of that more than just this is the best movie of the year, or best this or best that. So, oh yeah, no, I love the uh, opening montage with everybody talking about kind of their uh, kinder trauma. Yeah, <laughs> it's very relatable in this community. Yeah. Now, when it comes to presenters and you know guests and stuff like that, how did you decide who to approach, or did Fangoria help you out with that? I mean, were the people that you know and you've worked with before, or did you just cold call people? Um, I think I think that's one of the reasons why Fangoria hired me is because I, I worked with most of these people like as a photographer over the years. Because, uh, you know, I've been a photographer for Fangoria for, I don't know, oh my God, 12 years now. Uh, so I've, I've worked with a lot of those people. Um, I think the only... The ones that I didn't know that I was like really nervous about was uh, Joe Dante. I was like emailing him. And I was like, Mr. Dante, I would very much like you to come be part of this. I was so nervous. He was like, yeah, sure. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> he was super cool. Joe on set. Stupid yeah, dope. but I was he was the one I was most nervous for. <laughs> That's funny because you would think that you would drop Fangoria's name to get people to come, but it turned out they're using you because of the people you know. <laughs> you know? It's the, the opposite of, of well, what I thought. Of. You know, since since I started at Fangoria, it's had like three or four different owners. So, uh, and the the people running it now are awesome, but they're still, you know, it's still new. It's in their first or second year of, of ownership. And I think they're still, uh, you know, getting those, that Rolodex filled up again. Are you the senior employee out there now? 
I, no, no. At I'm 12 so, years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, there, I feel like there's a lot of writers and contributors that could say that at this point, but uh, no, I'm still, I still freelance for them, but I think I, I love the people that work there. I love Phil. I love Angel. They're awesome. And your covers are always really great. I still uh, got the uh, subscriber variant for uh, the werewolf issue uh, oh, that glows you. in the dark. Yeah, that was such a cool cover and how you guys had the American werewolf from London uh, werewolf on it, too. With yeah. them. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> we had actually tried to get uh, some some uh, gnarly gore from the from the movie, but we couldn't get it out here in time. So Phil was like, well, it's going to be a werewolf issue anyway. And uh, we went to uh, Magnus effects, M- McGee effects. I think that's what it's called. Uh, anyway, it's, it's the guy who does a lot of the um, effects work for universal for horror nights. And his shop is like literally like this amazing museum to like creatures. And he just like had the full size werewolf and brought it out for us to shoot with was so cool. I always love those stories of, yeah, and they just had this whole, you know, the full on werewolf just in the back, you know, and just wheeled it out. <laughs> oh, they have they have like everything, like full monsters, like tons of them in this shop. Like it was a way I'm sure, you know, everyone here has been to an effects shop and could tell you usually they're like dusty and messy and full of plaster and this and this and this. This one was like nice. Like, you know, it was it was so cool to be there. It, it really felt like going out to like a a horror museum or something that set up for like Monster Palooza. Oh, that's it, awesome! It was awesome. And uh, in terms of projects, I also uh, we, we're in the same film collective. Just scare me. Uh, I've mentioned on the show before, you know, uh, filmmakers have uh, a couple months to make a short, and. Uh, uh, bo- both of you, both of you have uh, submitted some very uh, interesting projects over the past several months. Uh, so I wanted to ask you a bit more about that and kind of what goes into your process. And uh, uh, also want to say, looking forward to next week. Oh yeah, um, we same. have us too, definitely. <laughs> New shorts for everybody. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the, <laughs> the group for me is has been super incredible. Um, I, I don't know if you want me to just talk about it a little bit, but yeah, Emma um, ha- had known uh, Buzz Wallach and several of these filmmakers and they, they started this group, Just Scare Me. Um, and it's been, for me, a, a really, I won't say, I wouldn't say life-changing, but um, it's definitely something that reinvigorated my love of being creative and, and storytelling. Yeah, for me, it's sort of, it's been, it's been really um, instrumental in, me as a filmmaker sort of when I started with the group when Buzz started it in like 2019 and it asked me to do it I had never shot anything without a crew I'd never you know been my own camera person or my own you know DP or uh had you know really I'd really depended on other people and I felt my worth as a filmmaker was only in the crew that I could get. And so it's really taught me how to do not only like learn how to do everything myself, but also giving me the confidence to know that I can. And I think that's been huge in my career and moving forward. You know, it's made me feel like a way better filmmaker. It also helps you communicate better when you are working with a crew. That's one thing in film school. I tried to get my hands on as many different uh, jobs as possible because it always helps to be able to talk to a DP like a DP, mm-hmm. you know, as a director or something. Yeah. So that it's good stuff to know. It, it is. It's um, and you know, I went to, I have a master's degree in photography, not film. So it's always sort of felt like a learning curve to me in some way. Um, but I, I, I think that it's something that I'm so thankful for the experience of doing it and, you know, moving forward, I feel like Brandon and I have really become this like two man band where we do everything on each other's projects and it's made us both a lot stronger as filmmakers. Well, I can definitely see that, uh, especially having watched uh, your collective works the uh, past several months. Well, thank you. It's always great having uh, a go to partner in crime, especially one who can (laughs) 
kind of take up the reins on ask different aspects that, you know, you might not be so great at. Like uh, my team, we're very much so that I'm a terrible editor. I don't know computers. Well, yeah. Jay can <laughs> attest to this every time we record an episode. Uh, I'm usually the one that messes up my settings. So. I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same. I, <laughs> anything, anything with a computer, forget about it. I hate it. I suck at it. I had a temper tantrum about my headphones this morning. (laughs) (laughs) If we need to print something, no, no, (laughs) no. You know what? Emma does. She does have the printer. Actually, she she did. She did set up the printer. Oh, see, you got me super beat there. I'm I'm the one who's (laughs) cursing. Like, why are we making 3D printers when we can't even get 2D printers right? Fuck. (laughs) That's I I sympathize with that 100 percent. Like. I am not a technical wizard by any means. <laughs> Korea once sent me an audio file and it was blank. And then he sent me a screenshot of what it was. So what am I doing wrong? I'm like, oh, well, the volume was down when you saved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, cause, Cause I'm actually a sound guy. That's what I do mostly. So, I mean, it, I mean, I guess if there's one thing for him to mess up with us, it's going to be something like that because I can tell right away. I'm like, oh, here's your issue. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Sound is so critical, man. God bless you. Sound is, I, in my opinion, the, the most important job on set is getting good sound. Everything else is easy as far as I'm concerned. We had a saying in film school, sound is half your movie. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> agree. Completely agree. Yep. In Just Scare Me, we have a saying called fuck sound. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us believe that. <laughs> Just ADR at all. Yeah. yeah, we have. And, you know, sometimes we have done that, and it works. So it, it it worked for Anna's last film. That was sort of the style we went with. Oh no! Remember our first short film we ever directed together, and the sound Which didn't one? work at all. Which one? The, oh, oh, oh uh, fun size treat. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had we, ADR the whole thing. <laughs> like oh, ten months into our relationship, we had already like started directing stuff together, and we did like this Halloween film together, a totally guerrilla style. We shot in front of some rando's house in Burbank. Like they have no idea a whole short film was shot in front of their house because of their Halloween lights. But anyway, so it, it was just a, it wasn't a catastrophe. The shoot and the film came out really good, I think, but sound, it just didn't work out that night. I think because we were planning on me operating camera, but Amber had to operate and I had to end up sitting in the back seat with sound. The next day we were like, Oh, this all sounds terrible. So yeah, we had to, we ended up doing ADR for the whole film, but it, in a weird way, it, it, it all came together really well. Yeah. It probably sounded better with ADR. Well, it was We just did it. We did all the ADR in the car, so you couldn't tell the difference. Like, okay. we literally just had the guy, and, and um, we just to get the most authentic recreation of what we did, we had them both come into the car, and we, I, Am and I, Am and I sat in the back seat. I was in the driver's seat, and we just recorded ADR in the car, and it worked out perfect. Man, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, don't go to IKEA to test your relationship early. Uh, <laughs> You guys are directing movies within a year together. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's a relationship <laughs> test right there. <laughs> Surprisingly, of all the films we've worked on together, those are the least stressful parts of our relationship. <laughs> yeah, I, filmmaking stuff, we don't really we don't really bicker or fight too much. Uh, I think we're both sort of of the mindset of like, get it done. Well, we're also very respectful of each other's ideas as well. Like, if, you know, if, I, if I'm working on one of Amazon's projects, I want to, you know, it's it's... I, just as you know as a man there's a, a tendency to want to just take over things and i i really have to stop myself and catch myself from doing that and i i want to make sure i'm being as respectful to her and her process as i can be so you know if somebody i you know i don't i don't know if this is info you're looking for but if somebody like for instance if we're on the fangoria set i it was my responsibility to be as respectful to her as possible so everybody else could see me being respectful um and i think that's one of the things you sort of have to combat with a female filmmaker right emma i mean i i don't mean to speak out of yeah. um, no you're right you're right respect is a huge issue on set so you know having that foundation of being on set with emma and knowing how strong her vision is that's something i don't want to mess with that's that's why we watch amalia films because they're amalia films you know so um our working relationship has always been sort of off the table in my opinion in terms of arguments and stuff her work is her work my work is my work we don't fuck with each other's work basically yeah that's that's what i was gonna say it's probably all about recognizing whose vision you're working on and you know not getting in the way yeah yeah and like you know we 
we try to not give each other notes unless they're asked for. I mean, there's times like, you know, the other day he's editing something. I was like, oh, I wish I could see that a little bit better. And he's like, how dare you? And then, like, I look and he's like, he's like over there editing it so you can actually see it better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, Emma has, you know, pretty much every idea Emma has is great. And I'm just too, like, cool okay, to okay. I'm like, it wasn't that great of an idea. <laughs> let, let me try that out a little bit yeah. oh my god she's fucking brilliant <laughs> <laughs> no and you can definitely see uh how great you guys are uh as a team and with your crew because uh like you said earlier jacob and i were there to be a part of the monster audience for uh the chainsaw awards and i i had an absolute blast got to bring my skeleton out and yeah. just like oh my god. so much fun oh my god was that you yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that you're my favorite person. All right, cool. All right. Yeah. That's a that's a Bones McCoy is my uh McCoy. is my non-binary I, skeleton. I made sure we cut to you several times. I was like, babe, we gotta get this guy in the show. Oh, yeah, man. He, he thought you were hilarious. He was just like, look at him, he's so good. Look at the skeleton. He's a fucking skeleton. <laughs> oh man. I, I spent so much time on her wig. It just like <laughs> was all mad because she hangs out on our porch all the time. We used to, when we lived in the front of the building, we used to dress her up with each holiday uh, for people walking oh, by and whatnot. But now we're, we're kind of in the back now. So she just enjoys sitting in the sun in the shade, you know, from the trees. But she had her time to shine. Bones has an Instagram, doesn't she? Yeah, but she's not active. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. We like we like to joke around that uh she parties too much and keeps forgetting she has an uh insta following. <laughs> she's too big of an influencer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it, it and it was so much fun to see. Uh I will admit, uh I was working uh when it first premiered, so I was like running in and out of the room to catch things. And the first time I caught myself in there, I was like, I, I get, I geed. I just, yeah. <laughs> There's bones. you know, we had several of our friends in the audience and it was as the, you know, as the editor, uh, it was my priority to make sure they were featured multiple times. <laughs> like Mark, Mark and Amber, Mark looked like, uh, Jacob, you know, Mark, I don't know if anybody yeah. else knows Mark, but he looked like a cross between like, what does he look like, babe? Uh, like less the guy from the something. room. Yeah, he looks like that mixed with uh, the guys in the room. Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau's Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> but they, yeah, it was, I mean, that that was, again, that was all am I. And it, it was just fun for me to just observe. Like, it's always fun for me to observe what Amma can just, like, create and assemble. She has this ability to get people to gather and it's something I've never been able to do that. Nobody fucking likes me, so I can't get anybody to show up anywhere. But Emma has this ability to just get people to show up. And, uh, you know, when when you're there and you're looking at the wide shot, you're seeing all these people like, wow, this is fucking cool, man. So kudos to Emma on that. Yep. Oh, it was, it was great pulling up. I think it was like 11 a.m. on a Sunday or something yeah. and like yep. going, is this the right place? And then just seeing a bunch of people in random like monster yep. outfits yeah. and you guys yeah. encouraged like yeah. people to do their own look and stuff. So everyone was different and unique and like various levels of like, you know, uh, just ingenuity in there. Uh, it was so cool to, it was like, Oh yeah, no, this is definitely a spot. Look at all these monster kids <laughs> running around. Yeah. yeah. It was oh, so and fun. actually, uh, John, uh, John and I have a story. I'm not sure we told you, but after the shoot, uh, yeah. So, uh, I was dressed up as Jason Voorhees in a suit with holding a fake machete and uh, Jonathan, <laughs> uh, like you were, you were dressed as a skeleton, right? Yeah. And I had a top hat thing. Yeah. And you had the skeleton and I was with my buddy, Jared, who was the invisible man. So we were hanging out outside after the shoot and a cop car pulled up oh, and no. right in front of us. Like, they, you know, they did like a Yui to pull into the into the street and and they pulled down the windows like, hey, did somebody call the cops? And we kind of freaked out because we were dressed <laughs> up as monsters and stuff. And we uh, oh, no. were just like, uh, no. And, and they just kind of looked at us for a second. It's like, yeah, OK. And then they drove off. Oh, my God. You would have thought that machete was real with how quickly Jacob threw that away from himself. Just like, <laughs> oh, gotta, get, gotta get rid of the weapons. We're gonna, it's a plastic weapon. Oh, we're standing here with a skeleton. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. Skeleton's not a threat. A machete might get you shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
it, it, even if it's a plastic one yeah <laughs> yeah well they, they're they'll yeah. shoot first and then investigate well, yeah <laughs> oh god yeah so yeah no it's just it was a it, it was a weird moment that's crazy wow but still it was it was fun to hang out with everybody as a real uh monster mash <laughs> yeah that was the monster mash man <laughs> yeah at that point that was like our last full day of shooting uh, we were you know the whole crew was exhausted <laughs> so we're just oh, like yeah. you know holding up, i was like holding up signs or like clap <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it felt like being on an old timey game show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys still had great high energy going. I I can say you guys definitely did not look like, oh, this is it. This is the last bit. Let's just get through this. You guys were very <laughs> enthusiastic and it was it was very easy to feed off of that, you know? Awesome. We were we we're so excited to be done that we like got really stoned and went to Chili's to celebrate after. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what we do every time we celebrate. Every time it's, we get stoned and we go to Chili's. Like white trash people that we are. <laughs> hey, I love Chili's. They got the baby back ribs. Oh, yeah. My after shoot uh, ceremony used to be going to Tommy's and just getting like all the chili. Just yeah. like, slap chili on everything. Burgers, fries. I, I don't care. No, I don't need a drink. We're just here for chili covered stuff. Oh. Sir, I think you've had enough chili. <laughs> Never. <laughs> this is a family restaurant. You can't do that here. <laughs> so what do you guys what do you guys have coming up uh soon as well? Uh I know uh Ama, you have a couple of uh shorts uh that you're in post and uh have ready to go soon. Uh you wanna let us know about a couple of those? Uh yeah, for me coming up. Uh, I did just shoot a short film called uh, Beatrice and Dante, which is like sort of a weird cross between um, Demeter and Persephone, the Greek mythology of like trying to bring her out of hell and also Dante's Inferno. And it's all shot in like black light. So oh. it's it's basically just like a stoner metal video. Very visual. I did that. Uh, I have a fashion show coming up for Midsummer Scream. That's like a 60s beach party, but horror. And awesome. I am trying to get a couple features made. And I think that's probably all I'm doing. What are you doing, Brandon? <laughs> if anybody out there is rich and wants to invest, Emma needs money to make her features. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Give Emma money. Give her money. <laughs> Hashtag give Emma money. I uh I, I'm toying with the idea of uh of doing like a Kickstarter, but I'm I don't know if people would give me money. Oh, they would. They would I don't would. it's <laughs> I, I don't know if, it's like one of those things like how much can you realistically raise from that unless you're like a cool person? <laughs> They're cool. I mean, I know a guy in Texas who's uh producing a feature and he, uh, he made his goal of 10,000, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, isn't that much, but you know, it's 10,000 more than he had before. Exactly. My, my goal is like 50, which feels like so much. That might be a little out of Kickstarter range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's investor range. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you run two Kickstarter campaigns. <laughs> you either do a Kickstarter and an Indiegogo. Yeah. yeah and, and a GoFundMe. Go go <laughs> the trifecta. It's, if it's good enough for healthcare, it's good enough for movie making. Right. Yeah. Oh, this country. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The GoFundMe's that bother me are the ones that are like, oh, help me fix the air conditioning on my car. <laughs> Yes. That's not what GoFundMe is for. <laughs> GoFundMe is healthcare, damn it. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's sad. Okay, well, that's a whole that, that's a whole conversation. <laughs> yeah, Jacob, you're not wrong though. That's you're not wrong. I've always wanted to do a GoFundMe to buy me a pair of pants. Uh, <laughs> just a pair of pants. Yeah, ju I just thought that that would be because I'm terrible at buying pants for myself. Shirts, I have so many shirts, but pants, like, I, it's a struggle. And I feel like that would be a good motivator. Just like you know, fifty dollars, and if someone donates like a hundred, then I'll get a pair of Jinkos and do a photo shoot for them, you know? <laughs> or something. That oh, that was always the plan. Please, oh god. <laughs> Like some of the, the Jenkos with like flames at the bottom or something. <laughs> the big flared out legs. Yeah. Maybe coming to GoFundMe soon. Buy Korea some pants. <laughs> you know, th throw in buy Korea some sleeves. Oh, and, uh, never. Donate. 
<laughs> Never. That would make negative money. People would be requesting money from me if I started wearing sleeves. I, I'm team no sleeves too. Like I cut the sleeves off like every shirt that I own. So yeah. Brandon, we cut you off on what you're working on now. Yes. We know about new hands. What else is going on? Yeah, um, I'm in post production right now on my Just Scare Me, uh, which is called Cruise Control, uh, which stars Amber Kloss and my buddy Tom Jones, who is also in New Hands. Uh, it's it's something that's definitely a little out of the wheelhouse for me. Um, I'm super super stoked for people to see it. Um, outside of that, I think after this Just Scare Me, um, the plans are to shift to a bigger project, uh, like another feature film or something, which is something I've been working on in, in the background for um, a while now. Um, there are several projects I, I'm, I'm eyeing. I'm pretty sure I know what I want to do, but the, it's kind of between two things right now. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just super excited for that. I also have this uh, project with uh, Amber Claus and Galen Howard, uh, which is a band called Die Knocked Phantom. And we just played our second show ever uh last saturday i think um but that was super fun we played that at the elysian in uh, echo park and uh that's sort of like our uh, german synth pop band which is just pure fun and pure silliness and um i would be on the lookout for some more music and for um some more live dates in the future for that cool yeah and i've loved uh their shorts uh the shorts you've done with them for uh just scare me uh, which I, I think is kind of the origin story for the, that band. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they, they started out as just my, you know, my entries into just scare me. There was, you know, just something I did just for fun. Um, and that's how I basically approach everything. If I'm not having fun and I'm not enjoying it, there's zero reason for me to do it. If I'm not making money off of it, it needs to be fun, you know? So um, that's sort of where that project is right now. It's, it's not, it's not at the, the center of my attention, but um, when th- there are things in the work, I, I have another song coming and we're going to do another video and yeah, eventually, hopefully we're going to release a full record and, and do a little tour and, you know, have just, again, just have as much fun as possible with it. Cool. Um, before we get out of here, um, let's, let's hear from Amalia about uh, Poltergeist and Paramours. What's new with that? Uh, I see you designed a Freddy's Revenge button up. <laughs> oh yeah, well, um, I I've been uh, unfortunately I finally got bit by the the COVID bug this past week, oh. and uh, so I've sort of just been stuck in the house in bed. I was like watching the the It movies, and I saw you know Richie's button up, and I was like, why have I never made those? I make that style of shirt. I have the ability to make my own fabric. So then I just sat there and started designing those. And um, well, Emma, you discovered that, right? You discovered that that shirt in It Chapter Two was a reference to Nightmare Two, right? Oh, yeah. I, uh, back in the day when the movie first came out, I posted it and then it ended up everywhere. And I was like, I because like, that's like one of my weird gifts is knowing when wardrobe is like an homage to something else. Like I have an eye for that for some reason. I you totally st- caught it. I, a useless talent and uh, mine is know. detecting Wilhelm screams in movies. Yeah, oh, I love. Wilhelm <laughs> I can hear They're him a everywhere. mile away. <laughs> yeah, I saw a light year yesterday. They used one there. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I made a a Hausu bathing suit. I, and I saw that. That's great. <laughs> the internet seems to be like really stoked about it. I uh, sure. <laughs> It's going to be the look of the season. Apparently, I, you know, sometimes I'll make stuff and I'll be so excited and nobody will give a fuck. And then I'll make something because I think it's funny and I don't think anyone will care. And that's the thing that sells. Um, I'm releasing a Manhunter shirt on Monday that I'm really excited. Like, personally, I'm excited about that. I don't know if anyone else likes that movie, but it's one of my favorites. So hell yeah, yeah, there's fans out there. Yeah, that's my favorite Hannibal Lecter movie. I mean, Same. don't get me wrong. Silence is a very close second. But yeah, Manhunter just visually is just delicious. Just I mean, come on, Tom gone. Noonan. Oh. <laughs> Tom Noonan is like one of my favorite actors of all time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tom Noonan. Have you seen Anomalisa? Yeah. yeah, he, he, oh, yeah. He's everything in that yeah. except for yeah. the two leads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. And then Tom course- Noonan world. Come on, last action hero and monster squad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. oh uh, man. One of the best Frankenstein's monsters. We have we have this like tradition of like every Christmas, Brandon will get me an action figure 
of somebody who should not have an action figure, if that makes sense. <laughs> but it's so, not as an actor. It's an actor that Emma loves. So yeah, like I have like a Vincent D'Onofrio one. I have a Ving Rhames action figure and I have a, a Tom Newton last, last From action last figure. Action hero. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, I was so fucking stoked to get that. It was the coolest. <laughs> That's oh. incredible. <laughs> Yeah, so... Uh, There's also going to be a Poltergeist and Paramore's fashion show, Poltergeist and Paramore's booth at Midsummer Scream this year. All kinds of Poltergeist and Paramore stuff happening. So much. Cool. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, I, I wear my vest at work at the Arrow almost every day, and I get so many compliments on uh, yeah the uh, Death Faults Records fan with the Paradise vest. And I and people ask me, oh, where did you get that vest? And I always point them to Poltergeist and Paramore. Oh, thank you. I uh, I got a whole stack of stuff to give you this week when I see you. <laughs> oh, yes, no, I'm very excited for getting my back order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, it's like a stack. Like, I, I have a Jacob stack. <laughs> because I have fine t- taste in fashion <laughs> we one of our guests a few weeks back we had kevin von esper who's making a movie about um haunted garage and um we were talking with him about you know about, about fashions and stuff and we directed him to uh to poltergeist and paramours oh, i don't know you. if he's i don't know if he's ordered anything or if he you know but he he was loving it when we showed it to him where he was oh, he was thanks, all about guys. it so i don't know if that went anywhere but we tried <laughs> oh yeah I mean, I saw I saw photos of the uh, house bikini set pop up in uh, (laughs) random groups, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. I like I just posted a picture of one that I'd finished. And like every time that I do that, it's like like I think right now it's up to like six or seven thousand retweets. And I'm like, really? Of everything I've made, this is the (laughs) one thing that and uh, the the scream skirts that I make, the Tatum ones, I cannot like. Emma's got some cool news about that. I don't know if she can say, I don't know if she can say, there is definitely a cool thing I know that you guys don't know, but is super fucking cool about that scream skirt. That's all we can say. Well, I'll, I'll cut this part out so that sh- no one gets in Oh, any leave trouble. it in. Leave the tease in. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> leave the tease in? Okay, sure. Well, the cool thing is, is like Emma made these skirts that are based off of the skirt from the first movie. It's super popular skirt. Emma's the only person on the internet who has them. Emma's the only person in the world who has these skirts. They don't make them anymore. She, it's it's just yeah, another like, testament to why Emma Lee is so badass, you know? <laughs> no, I did. I hired an artist to like painstakingly recreate that fabric. And that was not easy because it's, I, if you guys know the skirt I'm talking about, it's like a sort of digi, uh, like 90s uh, tie dye like almost. Yeah. Yeah. Very trippy looking. And it's just like, it was, I tried for years to find fabric that looks similar and nothing existed. So I eventually hired someone who does those kind of like fabric manufacturing designs to make it for me. And, you know, I, I thought it was just going to be for a few friends who really wanted it. And it's definitely like one of the, I can't keep them in stock. And, mm. you know, it's like, it's convention season, so every girl ever is like, I want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many runs of the Black Christmas sweater have you done? Have you done two of them? I'm, I'm on my second one. Okay. Um, if you're listening and you want one, please order it because it costs me more than a car to get them. <laughs> oh, it did. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's they're very it's it's a whole thing to get those made. Um, but yeah, we're on our second run and I don't know if I'll do it again after this. Cause it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. Um, but they're, they're in, in my personal opinion, they're like the perfect recreation of that sweater. They go. And, it, and this may be the last run. So if you want <laughs> one poltergeist and paramours, yes, you- order pre-order, They'll, <laughs> they ship in November. <laughs> there you go. Just in time for Christmas. Just in time. Yep. Yeah. 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 The perfect sweater for, you know, sitting by the fire about to get slayed by Billy. <laughs> it's, like, it's one of those things like every time I watch that movie over the years, it's like, man, I wish I could get that sweater. Why has nobody ever made that sweater? I was like, why don't I make that sweater? <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew a designer who could. Uh... <laughs> if only you knew someone who would who would put the massive amounts of time into recreating this <laughs> well i can't i can't take all the credit uh rosie keller uh jared rivet i'm sure y'all know him uh his his partner is uh she 
designs sweaters for like mod cloth and like, you know, she's a sweater designer. She does knits. And so I was like, can you help? And she's like, fuck yeah, I can help. <laughs> so it's really, <laughs> she, she did the hardest stuff. I just paid all the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, some would say that is the hardest part <laughs> coming up with the buddy, but yeah. um, okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank today. you so much and for having us. Yeah. Great to hear about all your projects and always a pleasure. So come on yeah. back anytime. Now, mm-hmm. now you're a friend of the podcast too, Brandon. So <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It was so much fun. Thank you guys so yeah, much. Thanks thank for having me. Jay and Jonathan. Wait, what are so we going to get a, an ion horror uh, slushy machine. Right? Oh, oh, it's, I dream of the day. It's still, it's still, we're still working on it. We're trying to get the, you know, the actual icy out here, which is hard to get one of those from the East coast out to California. <laughs> yeah, our, fl- our signature flavor will be eyeball orange. Yes. <laughs> We won't settle for a 7-Eleven one. That's for sure. No. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, we're going to call this an episode. So our theme song is by Restless Spirit. So go give them a listen. And our artwork is by Chris Fisher. So go give him a like. Um, where can people find you two, Brandon and Emma? We know uh, Poltergeist and Paramours for Emma, but Yeah, uh, I made it really easy for people. My production company is Burbank Cinema Club. Anything you want to know about me, uh, type in burbank cinema club.com that'll link you right to my instagram that's got basically any any project i'm working on or have coming in the pipeline i'm always talking about it on instagram so um that's where i would find any of my up-to-date news uh, of course you know be on the lookout for new hands later this year I'll, I'll be posting about it but um that's about it for me burbank cinema club.com cool emma uh, you can find me on pretty much all social media as uh, miss amalia and I post a lot of political stuff and uh, really bad jokes. So yeah. if, you, if you like dad jokes and democratic politics, hit me up. You know, we we got a podcast review that called us liberal left grifters. Oh, so oh you, wow. You fit right in. <laughs> oh, you, you know, push your agendas. The, the, the liberal left, I, I will wear that with pride, but I don't know where they get grifters. It's not yeah, like we're not asking for money. Yeah, I don't know. We're not tra- telling them to try and buy brain pills. <laughs> Wait, we we get money for this? <laughs> oh, I just, wow. I've just been paying you guys in spare digital codes that I get from Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be paid in NFTs? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can find us um, at uh, Eye on Horror on any of the socials or at iHorror.com, which is the site we all call home. So um, that's it. So yeah, let's... Uh, get the hell on out of here um we will see you all in a couple of weeks so uh thank you again brandon and emma uh, thank you. so for me Thanks, james j edwards i'm jacob davison i'm jonathan korea i am brandon i'm amalia keep your eye on horror <laughs>